Hello and welcome to Beyond Umzindo with myself, Anatole Tolo. If you are planning an international trip, then you've come to the right place. So today we're going to be talking about everything that you need to know in advance before you actually start traveling. So what brought about this video or this particular type of content is when I was making my first uh, destination video I realized that there was a lot of admin stuff that I needed to explain in the video which then I felt kind of made the video very long or lengthy so it made sense for me to um, perhaps make a separate video to outline only just the admin part of traveling so admin so I think one of the first thing that we you need to do is uh, decide on the particular country that you want to travel to at least a year in advance so once you've decided on that, then it makes the rest of the planning that much easier. Number one, three to six months before you travel. Try and decide on the exact location of your travel. So you've narrowed it down to the country at least a year before. Now three to six months, where about in that country do you want to go? If you're coming to South Africa, are you coming to Cape Town or Joburg or everywhere? If you're going to Egypt, for example, are you going to Sharam al Sheikh or are you going elsewhere in the country? If you're going to Thailand or are you going to Bangkok or are you going to Phuket or both? So that's what I mean by three to six months, kind of narrow down uh, the details of where exactly you want to go. That will help you kind of decide on also the type of activities that you will want to engage in while you're there. The other thing that um, you need to do when narrowing down that search is decide on um, the seasons that you are wanting to experience while you're in that country. So obviously we in South Africa or in the southern part of the hemisphere experience winter and summer or seasons differently to the people in the northern part of the hemisphere so um, or in the northern regions. So for example, if you are deciding on experiencing the destination summer then you need to narrow that down um, in advance so that you don't kind of go in the wrong time of the year the second thing that you need to do do is um check on your passport's validity so by that i mean we all know that passports have expiry dates but depending on the destination that you're going to um some countries won't allow you in depending on when your passport expires so if you've got three to six months left uh, before you travel then it might be worthwhile to apply for a new passport so when you're researching the country or region that you want to go those are the kind of details that you also need to check up on because like i said if you've got three to six months left depending on where you're wanting to go to you will not be allowed into that country the second thing that's important about um, passport validation is the number of pages left in your passport. So even if your passport has another year or two before it expires, but in some countries, if, you're, if you've got less than two blank pages in your passport, then you will not be allowed into the country. So yes, check on the passport validity. That's the second point. The third thing is you need to research the, re the visa requirements of the country that you're wanting to travel in to travel to. I'll just make an example. When we went to China, the visa requirements were very strict. I think it's almost similar to the Schengen um, visa for those that travel to Europe a lot, where you need to have a certain amount of money reflect in your bank account for uh, a defined number of months. Um, the second thing that we had to do was we had to book and confirm or and pay for actually all the um hotels that we were going to you needed to have an itinerary of all the places you're going to go to um you needed to have paid and confirmed flights so there was a whole list of requirements that you had to have before even applying for the visa whereas i know that some other places are more relaxed and you don't have to have all of that in advance before you apply for the visa so you need to research the research requirements other, the other things that that, that um, pertain to visas and, and I mean it's, it's a lot of detail so when I do the different destinations I'll maybe go into a lot more detail regarding visas for that particular country because they are different. There are some places for example like Dubai where you can apply for a visa on arrival but those things also chop and change all the time and COVID has had a huge influence on visa requirements. And I'll make an example, when I went to Kenya earlier in 2021, because of COVID, 
uh, South Africans had to have a visa to go to Kenya. But before that, we never had to have a visa before going to Kenya. So these things change all the time. And even if I go into detail and tell you about what each country requires, you would still need to keep yourself up to date because things do change all the time. So that's the one thing about visa. So you need to know what the requirements are, where you apply, can you do it online? Do you need to actually go there? And and that's why I say three to six months before and give yourself at least three months to start the visa process. The next thing um, that I think is important is creating a budget three to six months before because if you already have a budget, then when all of these costs that I'm going to talk about going forward, you've already covered them and you've already, um, you have the budget for it. Because, for example, even in something as easy as applying for the visa, if you need to go to the actual embassy, and in South Africa, we've got nine provinces, but not all the provinces have visa offices. So if you need to travel and leave your province to go to the visa office or the, the embassy for that particular country, like any home affairs, because embassies are glorified home affairs offices. So like any home affairs, there will be queues. Um, some of them I hear you can make appointments, but in the ones that I've been to, even if you do make an appointment, you get there and there is a queue and you have to wait your turn. So if you're having to travel to a different province or you are having to, for example, um, get alternative accommodation so that you can sleep over and travel back home the next day, it's all expenses and worse if you're then having to travel with kids to do all of those things. So create your budget in advance, know how much money you're going to need because things do come up, even things that you hadn't planned for. Then the last thing I would say is research vaccination requirements. <laughs> and um, for different destinations, you may need to have different vaccines. Some destinations don't need you to have any additional vaccines than what you already have. I know that also COVID has also put a spin on things in terms of the COVID vaccine, but I'm not talking about COVID. Like I'm gonna make an example with Kenya. In Kenya, we needed to um, have the vaccine or take a yellow fever vaccine. That vaccine, you need to take at least 14 days before you travel. So if you take it after the 14 days, either the travel clinic won't give you the vaccine or when you get to the airport on the day of travel, they won't allow you to go in depending on who you're traveling with. So research those things in advance, know what vaccines you need. Um, you, there is a website, I'll try, I will insert the, the details of the website um, on the description box, but you need to know, um, you need to go onto that website and check what vaccination applies to which country and when you need to take the vaccine. And also it gets a bit tricky because like I said, for Kenya, you needed to have the yellow fever vaccine, but you don't need the yellow fever vaccine to exit South Africa. You need it to come back. So if you don't take it and then you do go because nobody's gonna ask you for it, when it's time to come back, they will hold you back at the passport office. No, no, not passport for office. They will hold you back <laughs> at the, at the check-in counter and they will ask you to then go and take that vaccine and stay that 10 to 14 days before you can travel out again. And again, it depends on which region you're also traveling out to. So just to be safe and to avoid unnecessary expenses and hassles, research your vaccination needs before you go. One month before you travel, number one, I would say um, try and decide on your itinerary at least a month before. Now, it also depends on how long you're going to be staying there and what your budget is. But since at this point, you should already know all of that upfront. Um, and that's why I say try and decide because in some places you need to book in advance before you get there. Uh, I personally am not always that well planned um, in terms of filling up my days uh, with different activities. Some days, I, I am very flexible. Some days I just wanna not get up till one o'clock. Some days I wanna get up early. I remember when we went to Ch Thailand, not Thailand, uh, China, we were jet lagged the whole time that we were there. Like we were tired. And if we had planned back to back trips uh, before getting there, it would have been hard. So decide on what type of traveler you're wanting to be. Do you wanna be spontaneous um, or do you want to 
um, have all of those, those things sorted out before. But I think the reason I say decide on your itinerary before is because of the budget limitations if you've got budget limitations if you don't then it probably doesn't matter um, but if you are traveling on a budget then it would help you see um how much money you need to spend on what um so yeah that's that's the one thing the other thing i would say is finalize your accommodation if it was not part of your visa requirements um then now is the time to get that finalized i know that if you are perhaps 